Hi, this is a video about how to use basic functions in Outlook Web App. And we're actually going to start right at the beginning, which is with the login screen when you first log into Office 365. That's what you see on the screen right now. And as you see, it's got my stored username and my password already in the uh, boxes. So you're going to have to enter a username and password, which your administrator will give you. This will take you to the Office 365 Getting Started screen, which you're going to see as a new user to Office 365. But the important thing to know for this video is that up here you have Outlook, Calendar, and People. And these are the three ways that you get to the important sections that you usually associate with Outlook. And so we're going to click on Outlook. The first thing we're going to do is show you how the interface on your main Outlook web app page is organized. It's really a lot like the Outlook desktop application that you've been using. But there are some significant differences. If you want to compose a new message, you click this plus sign over here. Here is your folder list, so if you want to go to your sent items, you'd click there. If you wanted to go to your inbox, you'd go back there. If you want to save real estate, you click on this little sideways chevron, and that closes it off or brings it back. Up here is your search box, where you can search for mail or people. Down here is your list of messages, and they can be organized in various ways. Over here is your reading pane which is where you can read the messages. Now notice there's two messages in here. That's because this is a conversation and they're putting displaying conversations. If you want to get rid of that, you go up here to this item below the search box, click the little triangle, and you turn conversations off. And then it just gives you one message at a time. So you have different ways of doing that. Over here you have reply, reply all, forward, and here you have a bunch of additional things that you can do. So that is your basic introduction to what's on the screen. So now we'll talk about creating a new message. It's pretty much the same as with Outlook. You click on New Mail, and it opens up a screen. You put in who you want to communicate with. In this case, I'll send it to my other account and this is just a test. And then if you want to attach something to it, you click the Insert tab, and you click Attachment. And then you can pull things from your whole uh, choice of things. So here I'm actually on my desktop. So say I'd like to insert a photo of a, si of a signature of mine, say. I'd click on that, and I'd click Open and it would become an attachment, which would go right there. If I wanted to embed a picture in the message, I would go Insert Picture, and then I would navigate to a picture that I want to send, like this Microsoft Office logo. Put that in there, and that would be inserted. And then if I wanted to add text, I could just put it, you know, just like regular, with a regular message. And then when you're done, you just send it. And that's all there is to it. As with Outlook, Office 365 Outlook Web App will allow you to save drafts. So for example, if you're creating a new message the way that I was doing before, and you are typing along in the uh, message, and all of a sudden you decide that there's something you have to look at because you want to be sure that you're discussing what you want to discuss. You can go away from the message by clicking something else, and it will display you know, some other kind of information that you might want to include. To get back to where you were typing, you go over here to your folders, and you see that there's a something saved in drafts. You click on that, and your message comes back. And then you can either continue editing up here, or you can get rid of it. OK, now the folder list here works pretty much like the folder list did in Outlook. If you want to create a new folder, you just click on your name, and then you have Create New Folder. So that's pretty simple. I won't bother to do that here. 
As I said before, search is up here at the top of the screen. If you want to search for something, you just click in the search box and then you put in what you want. Now you'll see it'll give you some suggestions for content there. If you want to go ahead and do the whole search window thing, you can click here and it'll bring up the messages in there. To get rid of your search, you just click on the X and go back there. So it's pretty simple. The message list has some interesting features. That's this thing here. Uh, first of all, you can select all your messages, or you can just select the unread ones, if you want to do that, by unread, or just the ones to you, or just ones that you flagged. You can also sort the message by a number of things, sort of like the way you used to do an Outlook. So you can do it from date, or by from, or by the flagged, or things of that sort. There's a lot of options there for you. If you want to erase a message, just click the little X and it'll go away. If you want to flag it, it's got the little flag over there. In this area, which is called the reading pane, you have a lot of your basic functionality. You've got the reply button, which will reply to the message, reply all forward. You're pretty familiar with those. Over here, you've got a lot of different options which you can use to uh, deal with the message. OK, let's click on another message here so I can show you how to add somebody to your contacts list. You just go up to their picture, right click on the picture, click on details, it gives their card, and it says add to contacts. All right, you type in the information, and then uh, it's ready to go. Finally, there are two more important buttons. One of them is this little gear, which gives you a lot of things such as uh, options, which you can change display options, display settings. And there's also a button for help, where you can get a lot of instructions on how to do the kinds of things that I've been discussing here, and more. So I hope you've enjoyed this basic introduction to Office 365 Outlook web app, and that it'll make it easier for you to learn the new system.